Hey there, I'm your host Lassoi, and in today's video, I will show you how to create a wavespawn system. So I'll go ahead and hit the play button, and on our right hand side, we can see a wave 1 countdown. Now, our current enemy Q is set to 10. We can see that on the left hand side, 0 out of 10, and our current enemy limit is set to 5. So that means every time we kill an enemy, a new enemy will spawn in. Now, that enemy limit can increase as the waves progress, or if you want it to increase. And you can progress the waves by letting the timer run out, as it just did there, or by killing all of the enemies. Now, let's say the timer did run out, you might miss out on some loot, etc., and so on. Now, these waves that you're seeing are being spawned in by a data struct. So let's say you might have five rounds of data to spawn in, so the enemy type and how many of the enemies and later, if that data struct ran out, we can spawn them in with an algorithm. And with that said, let's begin. Before we begin, you are going to need some icons, some sound effects, and few enemy characters. So I'll go ahead and show you what I've got. In the icons, I got the gold coin and the skull icon. For my sound effects, I have the enemy deaths. They go like that. And for my characters, I have the two goblin types, warrior and scout, and the golem. So once you're set up, we'll go ahead and create a damage system in order to be able to damage our enemies. So the first thing we'll do is go to settings, project settings, and we'll create a new trace channel. So type in trace, new trace channel, and let's call this damageable. And the default response will be ignore accept and exit. Next, we'll go back into our content drawer and we'll create a new folder called projectile. And inside here, create a new blueprint class actor, pp underscore projectile. Now let's go ahead and go inside. In here, we want a static mesh. Now for the size, I'll do 0.2. And we'll do that overall. And for the actual representation, I'll grab a sphere. So that's looking pretty nice. And yeah, let's select our static mesh and do a sphere collision. Sphere collision. There we go. And I want this to be perhaps 12. That looks nice. For our static mesh, Select it and type in collision. And over here for the collision presets, you want this to be no collision. For our sphere collision, we want this to be custom and we'll be using the new trace channel we just created called damageable. Now, if you don't see this, simply recompile your project and it should come up. Next, we also want to grab a projectile component, projectile movement there. And if you, if we get rid of collision, recompile we should see the initial speed, max speed. So let's give this a value of 3000, let's say. And for the projectile gravity scale, now this is kind of drastic one, this is the drop off. So we'll do 0 0.01 and that will work nicely. Next, let's go to the event graph and on select your sphere collision, right click, go to add event, add on component, begin overlap. Now here, whenever this touches an enemy, we want them to damage it. So on other actor, we'll type in apply damage. Now, whenever this hits an enemy, I want the actor to be destroyed. So we'll do destroy. And let's say it doesn't uh, hit an enemy. We'll do like a delay of three seconds, let's say. So after three seconds, if it still has hit nothing, we'll do a self just in case it did hit something previously and we'll do is valid. So if we are still valid, we'll destroy ourselves. Select everything, press Q. This will line it up for you nicely. There we go. Now, the way I'll be destroying the enemies will be whenever they get hit, it's an instant death. So the damage doesn't really matter, but if you have a damage system, you want to set this up properly. So maybe 10, 20 damage and make sure the other actor is plugged in here, otherwise you won't damage them. So I believe this is all we need to do for our projectile. Let's compile 
and save. Next, let's go ahead and go into our character so we can actually spawn this. So third person, blueprints, third person character. So in here, we want to go into our viewport and grab a scene. So add a scene. And we'll move it up here. And we also want to rename it. So press F2 while it's selected. And we'll call it spawn point. So uh, we need an input. Now you can create an input action or just a keyboard event. It doesn't really matter. So keyboard one. And we can do left mouse. So from here, whenever our left mouse is clicked, we will grab or da -da -da, what's it called? Spawn actor from class. There we go. And the actor we want to spawn is our projectile blueprint. Select it. And that goes into pressed. And for the spawn transform, we'll grab our spawn point and we'll do get world transform. There we go. And plug that in. Then for the collision handling, we always want it to spawn. So uh, try to adjust location, but always spawn. So that's all we have to do here. And if I go back into my world, compile and save, we should spawn this whenever we hit it. Perfect. So that's working uh, pretty good. If we run, it doesn't work. Let's just see why that is. Perhaps it's the spawn location. Let's do it here. Let's try. Uh, there we go. So that's much better. Next, we'll go ahead and create our enemies. So let's go to the content drawer and create a new folder called enemy. Inside, we want to create a blueprint class character, and we'll call this BP underscore enemy underscore base. And this will serve as our parent for all of our enemy classes. So let's go inside and select mesh, give it a mesh for the location. I'll do minus 90 to bring it down and minus 90 for rotation to rotate it. The animation, I'll do animation goblin warrior. That's looking good. We should also go into the collision and make sure that it's set to custom and it's blocking our damageable trace channel. Otherwise, our projectile will go through and do no damage. So make sure that's ticked there. And I should also be able to set the color. So first compile it and then you'll get the material options. And now I'll set this to something like red, just so it's different from the original. So I know it's a parent class. Compile and save. And back in our event graph, we'll do a custom event called random roam. And this will make our AI go to a random location. We'll do AI move to, and we want this one. For the pawn, we'll do a reference to self. So we're moving ourselves. And for the destination, we'll do get actor location. And from here, we'll do get random reachable point in radius. So it'll get a random point between the original and a radius. So we'll do 2000, plug that into the destination. Nav data and filter class, you can leave that blank. On the accept and radius in the AI move to, this is how close they will get to the selected location. We can do something like 10. On success, we'll do a delay node. So D left mouse to get that. For the duration, you can put in a second or two if you want, or we can do something better, do a random float in range, and this will get a random value between the min and the maximum. So one and two seconds. And on the end, we'll do a random roll. Now we want a delay because otherwise we'd get an infinite loop. So if you want them to move constantly, what you can do is just do a delay of like 0.01. That should work for you. Now on the event begin play, we'll get that random roll and plug it in. So we can actually test this. Let's compile. And in here, we can control space to get our event graph or our content drawer, put the enemy in, and they won't move because we need a nav mesh bounce volume. So this allows our AI to move in our world. So uh, this is already on, but if you press P, you can actually see the radius of how big this is. So I'll set this to something like 20, 20 and five on the Z. And if you move this into the location, 
That should be good. We can now hit play. And see them moving. Now he's moving a little bit too fast for my liking. So another trick is we can select the AI and do control E and this will open your blueprint up. So let's go into your character movement and do speed and let's set the speed to 300. And while we're here, we can also select the enemy class and do orient and we'll orient rotation to movement. That should be fine. Compile and save and give it another test. And that's working pretty good. Okay. So next we should design a function. So when they die, something happens. So I've mentioned before, there won't be a health system. There will be an event, any damage. So when they get hit, it's an instant death. But obviously if you have a health system, you'll do health minus damage and etc. So when they get hit, we want to destroy this actor. But before we do, what we'll be doing is on our wave system, on our spawner, we'll be doing a bind event. So whenever they spawn in, we know they've been spawned in. And here we'll do an event dispatcher that will uh, we'll call when they are killed. So let's go ahead and do on eliminated. There we go. Call it and we'll put that here. And before this happens, we also want to update our gold and we want to play a sound effect. So let's get to it. Create a function called update gold. And here we'll do a gold variable. Let's make it integer. And if we compile it, we can give it like a base value of, let's say, three. So we'll get our gold and we'll add it to our total gold, which we don't have because this will be saved in our WaveSpawn system. So let's go ahead and create a new folder called WaveSpawn system. And inside we can create our game mode, BP underscore wave game mode. And now to access this uh, a little bit easier, we'll also create a function library to get this. So first let's do gold collected variable integer. Save that. And we can exit this game mode. And in here somewhere, we can create a blueprint function library. So what a function library allows you to do is get that function in any blueprint. So BP underscore function library. In here, well, let's do get wave game mode. That's the name. We'll do get game mode and do a cast to wave game mode. We'll also make this a pure function. And at the end, we want to return, return, there we go, this, and we'll call this wave game mode. There we are. Let's compile and save it. And in our enemy base, we can simply do get wave game mode. And there we go. And do gold collected. So we'll get it. We'll add our gold to our gold collected. And then we're going to set our gold collected. This will be our total value. So whatever our value is, it's going to add three to it and then update it. So we can add this here. And as well as that, let's add our sound effect. So new function called play that sound. And for this, we need a variable. So we'll call this the that sound effects. This you want to be a sound base object reference, and you want this to be an array because we're going to have multiple, not just the one. If you compile it, it will allow you to add few. Now, since this is the parent class, I won't really be adding anything in here, but just so you know, it's there. Um, let's get this. Let's do get random or let's, yeah, copy and then do random array item. So it's going to get a copy of the random item you've selected or it's selected and it'll return it. So let's do play sound at location, connect that there. And the location will be get actor location. And there we go. 
uh, exit and drag that into here. So that's pretty much it. So the next thing to do is to test this out. So if I play, but before we do that, let's also go to settings, world settings, and change our game mode to our wave game mode. Make sure your default pawn is your third person character. Save, and if you hit play, they should run around. It's looking nice. And if I shoot, they die. Awesome. So let's go ahead and create a few enemy classes. I'll get rid of the base parent. Uh, enemy, create a child, not duplicate, a child. And we'll do enemy gob, uh, goblin warrior. So let's change the tone back to our original green. There we are. And everything else I'll leave the same. So the gold value will be three. Now let's do duplicate of the child, not the parent. Or you can just create uh, another child from the parent if you want. I think duplication is easier for me here. Goblin scout. Now for this, we can set the gold value. If I see it here, gold. There we are. So let's say you kill the scout, and maybe you get four gold. We need to open this up anyway and go into this guy and change this to be our scout. Now this looks a bit odd, so change the animation also to scout or whatever uh, characters you have there. And that should be fine. I'll leave the speed as is. I'll only be changing the speed for the golem. So I'll create another duplication of the child and we'll call this golem. And in here, we can open the full thing. We can also, if you go to settings and show an inherited variables, we can now change the gold value here as well. So let's say golem gives you, it's harder to kill, gives you eight coins, something like that. And in our viewport, this will be our golem. And we'll change this to our golem as well. There we go. Now for the speed, and before I forget, uh, I'll change this to 150. I believe that's what I had previously, and it was working quite nice. So we can exit all of them out now. And let's just see how they work in our game. So select all of them, log them in. Maybe somewhere here, and just spread them out a little bit. So hit play and see what happens. So if I shoot, boom, he's dead. Boom. Oh, the hitbox is a bit different, but doesn't matter. And boom, dead. So that's working quite nice. This is it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. In the next one, we'll be creating the spawners. And with all that said, if you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.